In Germany, there are things that we not only had never seen before, but we had never even heard of in the United States. So when we moved to Germany, we suddenly were confronted with things people had on their homes, stuff standing on street corners, even foods Germans were eating daily that we had no idea even existed. And then, as soon as we thought we had seen it all, Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie. And I'm Aubrey. And we are two Americans currently living in Germany and sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. Last week, we did a video on five common American things that we never noticed may actually be uniquely American until we moved to Germany and we never see anywhere over here. Because there is so much imported American culture in Germany and imported German culture in the US, it sometimes surprises us when we suddenly realize there are some things that just haven't made the trip across the ocean that is so foundational to life in either country. So then that made us think, what things do we see in Germany that we had never seen in America? And that is exactly what we're going to talk about today in our video found on German plates, but not in the United States and also other non-food related items. We are originally from a southern U.S. state called Oklahoma and now live in the southwestern German state of Rhineland Falls. So some of these may be a little more specific to where we have lived and things that we have seen. So leave in the comments below what your experiences have been with these items or if you have never even heard of them. Also, let us know if you know of anything that you have only seen in your home country, no matter where you are from, so we can all learn from each other from around the world. As a new year begins, in Germany, you will start to see chalk letters and numbers appearing over doors of homes and businesses that look like some sort of secret code or complex mathematical equation. Most of these chalk codes we see start with a number 20, followed by an asterisk, then C, then a plus sign, an M, another plus sign, B, another plus sign, and then may end with 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, etc. After some investigative work and being surprised on January 6th with people posting online about carolers coming to their house and riding on their doors, we've never actually been visited by carolers ourselves, we learned that these equations deciphered are actually blessings on the homes for the upcoming year. The numbers at the beginning and end are the new year, so so in this year's case, they will now have a 20 at the beginning and a 21 at the end. The asterisk is actually a star representing the Bethlehem star. The plus signs are actually representations of crosses and the CMB stands for Christ Mansionum Benedicat, Latin for may Christ bless this house. In the Bible, three wise men arrived to bring baby Jesus gifts after he was born and they had the revelation that he is the Christ. This is called Epiphany. Epiphany is celebrated on January 6th and in Germany to mark this historical moment, Stern singers or star singers from the local parish go from house to house singing carols, reciting poems, collecting donations for children aid projects around the world and writing this chalk blessing over doors. These stern singers are little children dressed as the three wise men and angels. They will typically carry a rod with the Bethlehem star on it and buckets to collect donations after they sing and bless the house with the chalk equation. We also have seen it explained that the CMB could also represent the names of the three wise men, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. But that seems to be a debated issue on forums across the German internet. And when we received our blessing this year, the local parish included a leaflet that explains this is false. Sometimes homes may have years and years of blessings still written on their house that aren't cleaned off before the next year's blessings. This of course is what led to our confusion seeing all the different numbers, but sometimes you also find black stickers with chalk blessings printed on them for easier cleanup and removal once that year or festive season is over. Particularly this year, Stansingas are not allowed to go house to house, so they have found alternative ways of giving blessings like virtually, or you can write into your local parish and they will send you a blessing sticker in the mail like we did. We have heard this is mainly a Catholic and Southern German tradition, but we wonder if other parts of Germany know about this tradition. Let us know in the comments below. 
The next one on our list is one that we got a weird introduction to, and that is the Ordnungsbehörer. Now, if you're German, no, we did not get a weird introduction to them because of anything we did, but what they did. On a walk last year, there was an Ordnungsbehörer car driving through a local park trying to enforce social distancing rules while we were on a walk, and they drove through the mud and got themselves stuck. So we had to help push them out so that they could carry on with their rule enforcing. Because of this story, non-Germans are probably wondering if this is just the police, if they are a law enforcing authority, but no. This is the Department of Order and it is a municipal level law enforcement agency in some states of Germany, which has the duty to avert hazards that are endangering the public security or order. The most apparent Ordnungsbehörde is the Ordnungsamt, whose tasks usually include handing out warnings and tickets for petty offenses. When we first saw them, we were confused as to who they were because they looked like the police, but we knew they weren't because we knew the German word for police is Polizei. We had even heard that they don't have real arresting authority, and if a situation arose where somebody needed to be arrested, they would even have to call the real police for them to come and do that. Well, we had to do some digging and we found that not every place in Germany has one of these, or they may be called different names such as Ordnungsamt, Kommunale Ordnungsdienst, Städtische Ordnungsdienst, and so on. The Ordnungsbehörde is something unique for us because we don't have something exactly like this in America. If someone has a minor complaint, for example, like a noise complaint, they call the non-emergency line for the police to come out. The police in the US are thought of as the ones who will come out for any kind of unlawful behavior or annoyance, rather than calling a local code enforcer who can hand out fines. But from what we have read, that is basically the division of the responsibilities between the police and the Ordnungsbehörde here in Germany. The Ordnungsbehörde is who you would call if your neighbor is having a raging party late at night, keeping the neighborhood awake, unlike how you would call the police in the US. In the US, we do have some authorities that are somewhat similar to the Ordnungsbehörde in Germany, like building code inspectors and parking meter attendants. They have authority to enforce specific rules and hand out fines, but they can't actually arrest you and you wouldn't call on them for anything outside of their very specific field. These authorities, unfortunately, Unfortunately, also sometimes have a negative reputation in the US because people think they are just going around and having power trips over their little areas of authority and are wannabe policemen. But let us know, what is the reputation of the Ordnungsbehörde in Germany? Is it similar to the parking meter attendants in the US? I wanted to take a moment and just thank you so much for watching this video. This video is not sponsored by anybody, but you guys watching it is what supports us to be able to keep bringing you these videos. A comment, sharing this video, a like, and a subscribe helps us out more than you know. But if you have enjoyed it and want to support us in other ways, we have our Patreon linked in the description and you can check it out. There you will find some behind the scenes or never before seen bloopers for our patrons and ways that you can support our work. We very much appreciate the help and and you all interacting with us in any way that you choose that allows us to continue bringing you more content. Now, let's get back to the video. We hope you aren't hungry because we're heading into a couple of food items, starting with the almighty Quark. Quark is a dairy product made from fermenting soured milk and technically is a cheese. It is often compared to cottage cheese or drained Greek yogurt and is eaten in many various ways, like spread on bread with jam for breakfast, over a baked potato, or can even be baked into a cheesecake. It is supposed to be a healthier alternative to Greek yogurt or sour cream, and it is very high in protein. And it is an essential staple to the German diet. Along with Bratwurst, and beer, when people think of German cuisine, they should also think of Quark. However, the only time that I can think of that we've actually tried it is when we visit the city of Mainz. In Mainz, they have a specialty known as Spundekäse. Spundekäse is kind of a spicy and garlicky cheese bread or dip that is traditionally served with crackers or small hard pretzels and wine. There are varying recipes, but the most important ingredient in all of them is quark. Honestly, quark is a pretty hard food to describe to Americans because there isn't really a substitute for it in the US. Drained Greek yogurt can somewhat come close to it, but really quark is just quark. And when in Germany, you have to do as the Germans do and try it. For our German viewers, what is your favorite way to eat quark? 
Another food related item that we had never seen before moving to Germany is something I would classify in the very German category. One day, we took a little day trip over to Hamburg. No, not Germany's second largest city and Europe's third largest port. I'm talking about Hamburg, the third largest town in the German state of Saarland, with a population in 2017 around 42,000. Walking through the city, we came across a little snack stand frying up bratwurst and next to it, a vending machine full of meats. After seeing it full of sausages and other various butcher goods, we did some research and found out that this is becoming a trend in Germany that isn't so unique to just this small city. According to an article reported on by NPR and written by Independent, sausage vending machines are booming outside of German cities. And as of 2019, when the article was written, there were some 570 thousand of these vending machines already. Unlike in the US where many stores stay open 24 seven and 365 days of the year, in case you are hungry and need groceries, in Germany, nearly everything shuts down around 6 p.m. on weekdays, early afternoon on Saturdays, and completely on Sundays. This is more true still in smaller towns rather than the largest cities in Germany, and it leaves some of the small towns with large periods of time where they can't go and buy groceries. Because of this, Germans are well practice on prior planning and scheduling to make sure they shop in store hours to get the necessities. But one other solution is to place vending machines filled with some basic groceries around the smaller cities and towns so that you can still buy something after store hours if needed. They are temperature controlled and very safe to buy from, and some are even stocked with sausages and potato salad to be able to make a full traditional hearty German meal. The next thing we see in Germany that we have never seen in the US is something that led us down a fascinating rabbit hole filled with spies, mafia-like families, government-sponsored monopolies, and superstitions. But we will try and just stick with this specific object and save most of what we have learned for another video. But it is stairs on roofs leading up to the chimney on a home. No, these are not there for Santa Claus to climb up to be able to go down the chimney. He might use them though. But they are for easy chimney access for chimney sweeps. In the US, we have chimneys and sloped roofs as well, but we have never seen steps on a roof leading up to it. At first glance, it was unique to us, but we reasoned that if you ever have chimney problems, then I guess that would make it easier to fix it. But then that is when we fell down the rabbit hole. Turns out Germany has a fascinating history with chimney sweeping law and business. Like Aubrey said, it is a fascinating story full of superstition, mafia-like structures, spies, and medieval guilds. And it is something that we will have to save for another video. Now, we don't have a chimney in our building, so we don't have the stairs on our roof and not every German home has them. We have read online that German law requires chimneys to be cleaned twice a year, but also some of our research said four to five times a year they are inspected, and I think this is determined by the type of heating system you have. We also have learned that chimney sweeps now have a wider job description than just sweeping chimneys, including inspecting home heating systems that may not even have wood or coal burning stoves. So if you are German and have a chimney, how often does your chimney sweep come and sweep it? Because because of the integral place chimney sweeping plays in Germany and how often they are swept, a lot of homes have these stairs on them for easy access to the chimney. In the part of the US that we are from, we feel like we see way more electric or gas fireplaces now rather than real coal or wood burning fireplaces. Therefore, we never had someone come clean our chimney and we usually have grates on top that keeps birds or other animals from getting down inside of it that would need to be fished out. Therefore, it doesn't seem like we have the need for stairs on our roofs, unlike in Germany where they are are actually very regularly used. Just like we mentioned in our last video, when we moved to Germany, we didn't expect everything to be the same as the US and we didn't want it to be. We moved to Germany to experience a new culture and see new things we had never seen before, just like this list shows. We wanna show you guys these things from our perspective and experience so we can all appreciate what makes us unique. If you know of anything else specific to your home country, leave those in the comments. If you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button and we will see See you in our next video. Cheers. I'm happy to be here with my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than calling a local, rather than calling a local, rather than calling a local code enforcer. Quark milk product. Quark. 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 Quark.
Quack. 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 I'm ready. Quack. 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 We're working really hard on the pronunciation. That's what we're doing. Quack. 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 Quack.